Hey crafters! Well, you can probably see from the mess behind me that I have been collecting a lot of fabric lately. I also have some patterns I want to test out and it's all kind of um, waiting in the wings for some crafty magic. So I think today is the day I'm going to bring you guys along with me. You're going to help me tackle at least one of these sewing projects. Today's project is testing out a new pattern that I've been wanting to try for a while. I have been wanting to make a new pinafore dress. You guys have probably seen these. They are all over online in the kind of cottage core, vintagey prairie inspired aesthetics out there. They are pretty cute, but they are all also pretty easy to wear. Like you just put on a blouse or a shirt underneath and got an instant outfit. I made a couple pinafore dresses before on the channel. I think they were at least one 1940s, no, two 1940s inspired. Those are in my sewing playlist. Check those out because those were a lot of fun to make and to wear. Today's project definitely skews on the vintage side, but I think it should be pretty fun to wear, hopefully in normal life, but it could also work as a costume. We'll see. Join me for the sewing adventure. I'll show you that pattern we're working with. I'll show you the fabric, show you my step-by-step -step and what I learn on this sewing adventure. And of course, I'll show you the results. Roll up your crafty sleeves, maybe get yourself a cozy beverage. Join me for a cozy sewing project and help me tackle some of this. Let's get to sewing. Well, here is our pattern and here is our fabric of choice this afternoon. I'm going to be using kind of a, oh, I don't know, medium weight cotton weave. It's not too thin, but it's also not chunky. So hopefully it should be comfortable and kind of breezy and fun to wear. We'll see. Our pinafore dress is pretty cute. Definitely a modern pattern. Pretty basic. I'll be going for more of this style but without the exterior pockets and a few other modifications for the look i'm going for today i don't need those exterior pockets i'm also hoping to widen those straps a little bit depending on how this uh you know how much fabric i've got i would like those to be a little bigger since i'm not making a sundress i'm making more of a pinafore dress wider straps would be nice I've also done a bit of a mock-up, and I have learned some stuff. So, let's dive in. I first ended up sizing up for my pattern, thinking I'd want it a little bigger, since I plan to wear the dress over a shirt. I was thinking, okay, I don't want this too tight. <sighs> Note to self, I should have been checking out the finished garment measurements closer, because I did not need to size up. This is kind of big kind of bigger in the bust than I was thinking it would be especially that area um so yeah in my mock-up I found that well I don't need to size up really the bust area is actually pretty big but the waist is kind of narrow on me so I guess it's good I did the mock-up I'm probably going to go with the smaller size pattern piece but I think I'm going to Maybe add a little bit at the at the bottom of the bodice pieces just to make sure that waist isn't too tight. Because if it is, that'll make the buttons gape and not so cute. So I'm kind of going to make it kind of in between sizes there at the waist. Another thing I noticed, we're kind of, of course, we're kind of looking at, you know, that idea right there. I noticed that the back on me was kind of gapy gappy like a lot so I think I'm actually taking in the center back a little bit I mean that piece kind of hard to see it's like a rectangle it's cut on the fold I think I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller just in the center back especially near the top maybe not at like you know the waist because I don't want to shrink that waist in but it's kind of at the top of the back bodice I'm not going to be using quite as much fabric there to hopefully keep that on and that kind of makes sense because in a lot of patterns um, I kind of have a narrow back and there's some 
gapey areas back there, especially if I'm doing like a sleeveless fitted bodice, kind of like this. This has happened to me before. So I got to modify that, got to modify kind of near the waistband area. I'm going to make the straps a little wider. Oh, and yeah, can I complicate things more? Yeah. So instead of having the straps that are just, you know, straight straps starting at the shoulder and going to the back, I really want them to crisscross because I don't know, I got like super slopey shoulders or something and the straps don't like to stay in place. So on my mock-up, I experimented with lengthening the straps a bit so that I could actually crisscross them in the back. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm going to try that. Hopefully I don't mess things up too much. Now, if I was a really wise person, I would make another bodice mock-up and test um, the modifications that I want to make. <laughs> but I'm going to dive in. I'm, Yeah, so this dress is going to be a bit of a practice run in that regard, but that's all the time I got. So um, I'm going to go for it. Wish me luck. Hope, hopefully things work out. Okay, well, once we cut out a whole bunch of pieces, uh, I got to attach some interfacing. Oh, well, there we go. That's going to be going to um, the, this is, what is this? This is the lining piece or kind of like the button placket lining for the skirt. And then these are the two front panels of the bodice. Excellent. Of course, we're not doing that tie front bodice, so we got to keep skipping down here. Hey, well, this bodice is kind of cool. It's just a bunch of pieces stitched together with those princess seams. No darts, just lots of pieces. And, of course, we got to ease around those curved edges. That'll take a little bit of, you know, finagling. But, hey, every now and then it's nice to have a change from, change from darts. Um, hey, they're showing us pinning those shoulder straps in place. Of course, you know, different bodice there but they're showing us that i'll be doing that and trying to uh make them crisscross <laughs> we'll see <laughs> of course we pin and we base those to our bodice but we kind of just leave them hanging there because then we got to make our bodice lining we're we're, we're, we're sorry <laughs> bodice lining sorry too many choices here we're dressed c or d so we're down here we're basically making that bodice twice. And then we gotta sew those bodice pieces together. Once we turn everything right side out. Whoop. Yep. Uh, sewing, sewing these guys together around the exterior edge. Hopefully when we turn things right side out, we've got our straps that have been kind of sandwiched in the middle. They're sewn on. And then we've got all these really nice um, finished edges and all of our raw edges on the bodice are hidden. That's nice. That will look nice. Um, skirt, pretty basic, just a bunch of rectangles. I will probably, if my fabric allows, I will probably do those interior pockets. I don't want the exterior today. It's a cute look, but I'm going for more of a streamlined skirt look today, so I might do that. That could be good. We love a pocket. Of course, we're sewing our skirt panels together when we gotta gather them. Awesome. Oh, hey, then we are attaching our front facing piece, a little rectangle that's going stitched down to the front of the skirts pieces in the front. Of course, that's basically going to be reinforcement for our buttons, which are going to go right down the front. Very, very cool. Okay, hey, then we're gathering our skirt to fit our bodice pinning them together, sewing them, leaving the lining of the bodice free. Ooh, cool, because that can all get pinned and cover up all the raw edges on the inside. We can just stitch that lining down on the inside once everything is nicely covered up. Sweet. Okay, hey, then they've given us a guide in the pattern to show us, once we have the garment basically finished, we line up that piece to then show where the finished buttons should go. I may end up adding another button or two so that my front doesn't have as much of a slit. We'll see. Um, and then we've basically got to make 10 million buttonholes and sew 10 million buttons on. Okay, well, um, 
should be pretty straightforward. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to see. Can you see? Pattern says easy. <laughs> should we believe them? I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, I'm going to basically be doing a whole bunch of this. Yeah. All right, and I'll fit in as many pieces on this fabric as I can. I am working with remnants, so hopefully this will all work out. I'll show you how it goes. Let's get started. Well, update, you guys. My fabric is not as wide as the fabric that the pattern calls for, and it looks like ee, we are going to just be able to fit in the skirt front panels. Like, just barely by, like... A, a little, a little, a little wiggle room. I think it'll be like just fitting. Oh my gosh. Also, I was ironing my fabric and you can't see on camera here, but I got this fabric second hand and there are some spots on it. Ugh, so I've marked them with some safety pins from the other side. It's really hard to see the spots. Most of them are not that visible, but Oh, man. So I think I'm going to have to do some extra legwork <laughs> to fit the pattern pieces in and hopefully avoid those spots. Thankfully, it looks like I'll be able to get the skirt panels in, and those are the big ones. So uh, back to pinning and cutting. Well, it is some time later. And we finally have all these darn pieces cut out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we basically have four pieces of a lot of the bodice pieces, four or two bodice pieces, a whole bunch of pocket pieces. Uh, we've got the skirt interfacing. We've got the straps down there. Oh, of course, we've got our giant rectangles for the skirts. And thankfully, I was just able to fit everything into the fabric remnant I had, and I was still able to work around those spots. So, yay! However, it is now uh, pretty late in the evening, so I think I'm going to hopefully cut out the interfacing pieces that I need, maybe attach those. We'll see. I'll get as far as I can tonight, and then I'll show you tomorrow how far I got. Well, good morning, you guys. We are back, and you could tell from my footage last night, I actually did get a bunch more work done. We, of course, have on the left, we have our bodice fronts pieces and then the bodice front lining pieces. And on the right, we have the bodice back and bodice back lining. Down below there, we have our straps. So first things first, I want to be pressing these seams open so they lay nice and flat. You might notice I did clip some curves or clip the seam allowance um, at the curves there in the front bodice. So need to be ironing those, need to turn my straps right side out, and then hopefully we can start putting some of these pieces together. Let's take a look at our next steps. Okay, well, here we are. We are sewing those bodice front to bodice back pieces, and then of course we gotta do the same thing with our lining. They also want us to attach our straps to the bodice front. Of course, those are gonna get sandwiched in between when we sew the lining to the front of the bodice. Uh, before I can do that though, I highlighted this so I didn't forget. I need to iron under the bottom edge of my bodice lining. That's gonna be nice because when we try to cover up all the raw edges from the skirt and stuff on the inside, that nice pressed edge is gonna be perfect for that. Hey, and once we finally, you know, pressed all of our seams open and, and got the straps in there and done all the thing, we can finally sew the lining to the bodice front. Very cool. Trim the seam allowances, and hopefully when we turn everything right side out, it's going to look all pretty. They also want us to do some understitching. Yay. Okay, well, um, let's do that. Here we go.
Hey guys, well, we have a bodice. Woohoo! Hey, I will say, construction of this definitely took some time, but overall it wasn't too fiddly. It was kind of like just, you know, just keep on going and it'll, it'll happen. I did try it on. It does look like it's going to fit pretty well. I did notice that the straps seem a little bit too long. The back may also still be a little bit too big. Um, we'll see. I think what I am going to do is come back in, turn this wrong sides out again, just open up the seam where the straps were and bring them in probably about an inch each. I started off making these about 24 inches long and I think that's a little bit too long. So I think I'll shrink them to about 23 inches. I also made them straight up and down and I think I'm going to angle them a little bit so that they crisscross a little bit better. So we're on the right track. Of course, this was a complication, you know, I added to the pattern. So it shouldn't be too difficult to try to fix it. And I think we're going to do that. Afterwards, then we got to do some uh, top stitching or no, not top stitching, under stitching on the inside here for our bodice. And then we'll be ready to go to the next step. So I'll fix those straps and I'll let you know when I got that done. Well, hey guys, we are back. It's a new day and you can tell we have switched things up a little bit. <laughs> We're looking at the skirt pieces and our pocket pieces. I'm taking a little break from that bodice because yes, I did adjust those straps. I actually ended up adjusting them in the front and the back. I hope they're going to work. And also I still think the back is gapy. We're going to find out. We may have to take just a giant dart in the back, but, um, I'm taking a little break from that. <laughs> you can tell over here we got the back of the skirt, really big rectangle. Over here we've got our two front skirt pieces and then four pocket pieces over there. Let's take a look at the directions and see what we need to do on this skirt. Okay, let's see what we got coming up. We're kind of in the home stretch. I mean, we still have a lot to do, but this is technically like the last full page of directions. So, hey, go us. We're doing it. Okay, so we got to pin on and sew on our pocket pieces. Of course, we're sewing them to the front panel. So we're sewing them to the back panels. Then we're going to line up the back and the front panels and stitch them all together, getting our pockets in there. Awesome. We're skipping over here a little bit. Running some gathering stitches on our skirt. Fantastic. We got to finish an edge of that front facing, and then we are going to be stitching that facing or just lining piece to the front edges of the skirt that's going to end up folding to the back and just giving us a nice reinforced area for our buttons and buttonholes i don't have to add a piece like this to the bodice because we already use some interfacing on the front panels of the bodice so we've reinforced the bodice already we're adding a little reinforcement to the skirt awesome uh then we gotta pin the skirt to the lower edge of the front bodice and gathering that skirt to the bodice we're going to stitch that down but we're going to leave the lining free we're going to stitch the skirt to the bodice front and then that bodice lining on the inside it's going to get kind of just sewn in place by hand covering up all the raw edges coolio okay after that we're still not done but we've got this lovely little guide in the pattern and we're going to line that up add our buttonhole markings I'm going to probably add a couple extra buttonholes because I hate myself, apparently. I don't know. Um, then we got to sew on 12 million buttons. Oh, and did I say hem? We got to hem the skirt. Aye. And then we've got this thing. Okay, guys, I'm going to dive in. Let's uh, do this. Here we go.
Uh, well, good morning, guys. It is yet another new day. I put in a pretty good work, day worth of work yesterday <laughs> sewing this guy. Uh, I also made some goofs, and, um, well, this is as far as we've got. You could tell we did end up getting that skirt constructed. We got the skirt sewn to the bodice, and then late last night, I ended up putting on a whole ton of buttonholes. Oh my goodness, I even added a couple extra, so that took a while. You might be able to tell, though, I have not yet sewn that lining down on the inside, and... Uh, that should have happened first before those buttonholes because you don't want that lining to be out of place um, when you sew the buttonholes because the buttonholes go right through into that lining. What's going on? Well, I ended up pinning the lining down with a whole bunch of pins. You can tell I even have some on the other side still in place. I did a ton of pins and then I put those buttonholes in first because... I'm still worried, worried about fit issues. Um, I had to order buttons online because I need so many of them. They haven't arrived yet, but once I sew those on, then I'm going to get the final word on how this thing fits when it's on. Just pinning it, moving it around, I still think I need to shrink those straps in. And if I had sewn that lining in place, I would not be able to access the straps inside the bodice. So, um, yeah, I kind of had to allow for some adjustability there. I think what I'm going to do is put this on and experiment a little bit, just pin it in place, maybe adjust the straps a little bit more. And I also think I need to take a big dart in the back. Hopefully I can adjust the straps to make it work. And then once I get those buttons on, hopefully this is all going to work. And if not, I'll have to adjust more. <laughs> then, <laughs> then I will be able to finally sew that lining in place and we'll be good to go. Let's take a little look at that bodice up close. Okay, here we are. So, uh, one goof I made last night was I sewed these um, skirt bands, skirt linings on the wrong way. <laughs> and had to take those off. That was fun. Those eventually get folded over, over the gathering inside, stitched in place. And then, of course, our lovely ironed under edge here for our lining would then cover up everything, theoretically. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And, of course, um, I'm going to be getting in here to shrink some of these guys <laughs> I don't know doing the crisscross strap design definitely made extra work but I don't know I hope it works I don't know I tried it on and I almost think I need to shrink it in almost another inch I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it put it on pin it and see also yeah that back panel very back center. This is where I've got some really big gaping. So I started doing a little marking. I'm probably just going to take a big old dart down the middle. Probably just stop it. I don't know. I don't know, like five inches down and maybe even take in an inch. I don't know. I'm going to try an inch and see if that's too much and experiment. So uh -huh. we're not quite done yet, guys. We've got a little more troubleshooting. But after that... I think we're going to be pretty close. Well, you guys, we are back yet again, and our dress is finally done. <laughs> okay, the, the strap adjusting, that was probably one of the hardest parts of this whole project. I don't know, was crisscrossing those straps worth it? You tell me. Um, but they ended up being, I mean, honestly, I shrunk these straps down to about 19 inches, not including seam allowance. So, um, yeah, I did have them way too long. The whole dress was sitting too low. And so those had to be adjusted a lot. And, yes, did take a giant dart out of the back panel. Um, I'll show you that in a second. It's back there, obviously. Um, I think this pattern may run big in the back. I, 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 yeah, I'll show you. Um, but, yeah, the rest, other than that, we got a million buttons stitched on. And got the lining stitched down, and I think she's 
ready to wear. Uh, let's take a little look at the inside and I'll show you a couple of those modifications real quick. Okay, well, we're looking at the inside. There's that back panel and that big old dart going right down the middle. Man, I ended up taking in about two inches from the top because, you know, my dart was like here. I, it was about an inch on each side of the center. Brought it in and uh, brought the dart down pretty close to the bottom. That seemed to help. Of course, when I added these crisscross straps, that added a lot of, you know, stress towards this back panel. But I feel like that is just taking it in a lot. Even if I have a narrow back, that seems like a lot. If anybody tries this pattern, you know, let me know. Did you find it big in the back? Of course, to make this giant dart, we unstitched this area. Of course, we didn't have the lining sewed in place, so we could just open this whole thing up. Made a dart in the uh, outside of the back panel. And then one on the inside. And then... Stitched it closed again. Yes, that was kind of a pain, but you know, it worked. Then of course we finally stitched that lining down, sewed on a million buttons. I still have markings that need to go away. I think I ended up using 13 buttons. Pattern called for 11. I added more and of course I had to order those online because you know, who has 13 matching buttons um, at a craft store? Anyway though, um, Looks like we did it, and it looks like it's going to fit pretty well, so go us. Well, guys, if you get behind uh, tackling your own sewing projects and maybe even doing the things that say they're easy, but they're not, <laughs> give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more fun stuff from Partners in Craft. Thank you guys, as always, for the likes and shares and comments. It really makes my day. I'm pretty excited to take this dress outside for a little fall adventure. So, of course, I'll take you with me and I'll show you what she looks like. Oh, hey, guys. Before we go do that, I wanted to show you my costume. Yes, I know this video is going up after Halloween, but I will be using this dress as a costume. You can tell I've added a thrifted blouse. I made a really simple um, apron and then a hair bow because I'm hoping to be Belle from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. So, should be pretty cute, I hope. Hopefully, relatively comfy. Um, everybody at my work is going for a Disney theme, so... That was a good excuse to try out this pattern because I thought it would work pretty well. Although Belle's dress does not have buttons, but again, I was trying to use the quote-unquote easy pattern <laughs> for this project. And I'm really excited to just barely get it done in time. So, clothes or costume? You pick, guys. I uh, will put together a slightly more normal, uh, still cottagecore outfit <laughs> and show you this outside.